So welcome back to the part two of our Eureka podcast series with Divaya. Uh, part one, we were discussing kar rahe the, what was the research that went into writing the corporate Bidai ad for Shark Tank season three. So here we start. You know, the funny part is that um, the most, uh, actually uh, Puneet and Deep, who did like actually the heavy lifting on that uh, in terms of writing, uh, I don't think Deep has ever worked in a corporate office. And uh, Puneet also had a very small stint, like some many years ago in a corporate office. <clears throat> what, like how you kind of research these days is, um, you look at the memes, all right? You're always looking at memes, looking at like well, how people are reacting to something, go to LinkedIn, just see how they're, you know, sort of bitching about their bosses, about their jobs. Like what are the pain points? This is You make a note of all the corporate pain points. And then you also like get to hear these uh, uh, very weird like uh, sentences uttered in boardrooms like we'll circle back or like um, uh, you know uh, uh, like you know in emails like when you say warm regards regards there are a bunch of these jargons that uh, you know people always use um, so it's basically you make a note of all these things and then um, figure out how to fit most of it into like a Bidai trope but also stay true to the Bidai trope right yeah. So that therein lies the challenge. Whereas you have to like marry, like literally marry, like the bidai kind of trope that goes on. What happens? Like how a girl's father would react, how like a girl's mom would react, how is a groom reacting, and then you have to kind of fit in these insights and language into that situation. Um, so yeah, so and then you kind of do that, and um, then like that's how like. That's pretty much the interesting. Writing of the interesting. I will. I'll shift gear a little bit mm. from from uh, writing the ads vis-a-vis -vis what is. So when a client actually signs off a second season, so this mm. Shark Tank was, I think, the second season uh, of the collaboration with Sony, right? Oh, with for us, for us, with, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what I wanted to understand is, in term, when a, when an ad is released for a mm. show or for a brand. Do you get to know the performance? Like, has it increased the brand matrices mm. uh, in terms of, you know, uh, likeness, mm. relatability? Do you get exposed to all of those details from the client? Uh, yeah, sometimes I, they, they do tell us if mm. it's done well. They'll be like, hey, this did well. Yeah. But we generally, like, we don't get, like, detailed analysis of, uh, mm. like, how it did well and all that. I, they if they generally mention okay like it did well like you know people spoke about it like our whatever brand track yeah. scored well in mm -hmm. uh, in in these things that's all that like we generally get to know but also you get a sense immediately right like when like people are talking about it mm. like you know you you hear people outside of advertising outside of like the internet also talk about something you know okay this is like clearly worked when you're going through comment section and the shares you understand like when people are sharing like how are they talking and after they share how what, if they're getting comments if they're getting likes so then you really understand people are interacting with a piece of mm. content then you know that uh, you know that this is kind of work mm. and uh, yeah and yeah clients do sometimes share that hey that this did well so understood yeah a follow up question hai huh. ki, you know a lot of traditional clients and an agency relationship jo hota hai na, mm. so jo, jo strategy team hota hai agency side pe, mm. they delve a lot with on data with a client mm. right mm. uh my question is ki when jab tumhare paas brief aata like you said mm. in the beginning the brief comes in as in the client says humko ye chahiye mm. humko ye problem solve karna hai yeah. which means that you are you are g being given a broader playground to play. Ki ye problem solve karne ke liye kis tarha ke comps required hai and you add the humor question and all of that, right? But when it comes into, you know, getting into more of research, getting into more of customer insights, right? Do you think that that, while that is a necessary process for a lot of big brands, but do you think that that also boxes a lot of thinking and makes the creative process a little bit more boring? I mean, uh, see, for example, the Shark Tank ad mm. itself, right? The client was very clear that this year we want to talk from the point of view of corporates and jobs mm. moving into startups. Mm. So this, th they, they had that angle which was very clear. So it was easier. Like, mm. you know, you're not thinking of 100 things. Mm. Like, you know, okay, this is the brief. Like, these are the guardrails and mm. this is not where you want to wear off. But sometimes I understand, like, mm. it can also be a concern, right? Like, if it's too boxed, 
like you know how do you get out of uh, how do you get something uh, good when it's everything is already defined mm. um but i think like uh, now clients are more open mm. all right because they also understand that for you to get engaging content mm. there has to be slight flexibility freedom. and freedom in terms of how you can say these things mm. um like in my first stint in advertising between 2008 and 15 like you know everything was like dictated right yeah. like you could say these things these colors have to be used uh and this particular line has to be there yeah. in the film like a dialogue has to be like this uh, a particular concept needs to happen in the film like mm. it would go down to even to that that, that like it would go down to that granular level mm. uh, but now clients are definitely more open because the the medium is open right they understand that the medium is open yeah. so there's clients are no more competing with other ads anymore they're competing with ads they're competing with reels they're competing with yeah. shorts they're competing Attention. with uh, yeah you're competing so you're competing with like instagram posts yeah. as you scroll by yeah so you need to be more flexible and clients get that these days coming back to you know this is a hard job as we spoke in the beginning right there are so many things that go into getting an idea cracked getting that idea greenlit so many levels of approvals and then budgets and all of it right talk about a little bit of challenges that you have seen uh mm. in your last couple of years in your career especially in this industry i mean one is definitely uh, like one is like you know like you say finding quality people to work with yeah. like it's very difficult in the market uh that for sure one um why do you think so i want to yeah. delve into that because that's one of the thing that we are mm. trying to solve mm. through this podcast se- mm. podcast series right like mm. how can we help our young mm. audience in our country to mm. be to be a little bit more aware mm. of the opportunities and mm. then train themselves mm. like talk a little bit more about that sp- particular challenge about great talent yeah in this country in writing yeah i i think uh, th- i mean i've thought about this and i yeah. feel what it comes down to is patience mm. okay patience from both the ends mm. patience from the uh, from the talent and patience from anyone who's employing the talent mm. um what has happened is that uh, you also feel that there is so many abundantly available options mm. that uh I think everyone's a little lax because um and blame definitely doesn't rest only on like some the employer over here mm. um or the employee mm. right uh so it, it is that okay like if you get some person you also tend to give up a little sooner because you're like there are so many people in the market I'm going to try and replace mm. Mm. all right correct and what that breeds is that like you are not giving a 100% to make to make it work in that situation for that person hmm. i've seen this in multiple agencies like my friends run a bunch of agencies hmm. um where i've seen that right like where um you also are like okay not working out not working out okay like in two months you figure okay let's move on figure a way to replace or find another person now um i think this didn't happen when i started out in 2008 9 hmm. all that like there was like a paucity of talent hmm. so like you gave people chances and i have seen people like 8 months into the job clicking yeah all right and then just becoming really good at it like the first 7 8 months there's hardly any like they're just still grappling because it's a creative field you are uh, everything is very like uh, subjective right so um, and you're dealing with ideas you're not dealing with ones and zeros there's no like output after a program so um so and there's an environment so you have to kind of like you can't come in day one day one of your career and start delivering hmm. uh, or year one and deliver yeah. right so i feel that way i think even the employers have seen like kind of lose interest uh, not having patience and definitely this is definitely more of people coming in like they also don't have patience yeah uh try something for 5 6 months and if it is if they think it's like not working out uh quitting is a very easy option these days mm. because there are 100 jobs available yeah. so you quit and then you move to another place but you don't resolve the issue mm. like you you change places yeah. but the fundamental issue why this is happening you do not resolve or you do not work on mm. so i think that is very important like you know um if something is not working out like i feel 
you should understand why it's not working out and is changing the job going to fix that maybe it's not like it's maybe working on like yourself or working harder or maybe just understanding things take time yeah right like it takes like you know it's i mean it thinks it takes time it takes like 5 years 6 years sometimes for you to become like really good at something it's not a one year game it's not a two year game and also like uh, aligning your expectations hmm. with reality right like the problem also is that we live in a world where we 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 broadcast everything hmm. so you feel the minute you don't have anything worthy to broadcast you think you're failing hmm. right so that is a another huge problem so or uh, you know you see like you you get easily distracted you see some other thing happening somewhere like hey maybe that form of writing is good like maybe let me just go and write uh, content for a youtube channel then you go there and you're like oh no this is like is too much work it's too long mm. it's like uh, maybe monotonous it's this okay maybe like let me switch to like web series writing <clears throat> and so what happens is um so yeah you are not giving yourself time i feel and um, that is very important like you know just work hard understand that you know to be reasonably successful it's going to take like 5 years 6 years 7 years yeah uh, and uh, you truly need to believe if you believe what you're doing is good and you are happy doing it and you don't um, like and you have to put in the hours so uh, so giving up i think is a big problem and primarily because of there is so many opportunities that exist today so many opportunities that exist today so you think you can give up and you think you, you think you are going to get it's going to fall into place in some mm. place or you think you're going to get lucky in some place so you just move every 8 10 months okay okay maybe this place is the answer that place you no know, maybe it's not the answer the answer is just you know you having to work like you know like 5 years 6 years for you to like yeah. kind of make something yeah mm. uh, what about like when you're talking about challenges is one of the biggest piece in the world of creative right now is ai yeah right so especially in writing uh with different bots chat gpt and all of it how do you think how how do you foresee writing will evolve gradually mm. in an age of ai it's going to be most amazing part i think of uh, like our careers you know you've automated certain inefficient parts of writing hmm. so um so that is like great hmm. for starters hmm. you can like see the problem in the writing business is you have a limited amount of time hmm. and there's only that much you can work correct you cannot work more than that now if this is going to give me some sort of like uh, assistance hmm. whatever like you write a script hmm. and you Sp- like you s- spend a good amount of time hmm. like grammar checking that script hmm. right like you spend a good amount of time like you know these are small things you might not realize hmm. but like it takes some amount of your time yeah it just sorts it out for you hmm. like you have to write an email to someone and uh, it takes time to write an email yeah. like people underestimate how how much time it takes me time to write an email uh because it has to be proper like everything i'm thinking should come through plus it has to maintain grammar plus all the spellings have to be right it is it it takes time now like uh, with uh, gpt like if i just go put my mm. just rough thoughts and say craft an email and it mm. crafts an email and obviously like it will look like it's written from gpt yeah. and i think sometimes see sometimes it takes more time sometimes i think it's like very efficient for it to craft and you make small changes to make it look like it is uh, uh your language i think is i think is good like i think gpt is only going to like progress hmm. further hmm. because some 3.5 to 4 was insane yeah insane that was just uh, like some four month difference it was just really yeah. something else so i think uh, is going to help us maybe think more multiply ourselves hmm. better yeah. um and i i i feel like that is where this is going to go hopefully and uh, it'll help creative people get richer yeah because you can create faster you can create more which means you can build more yeah so i think uh, hopefully like that is how i look at it <clears throat> and um uh, sorry what was the other part of the question the other part of the question is uh, how does so what is how do you uh, you know relook yourself as mm-hmm. when in the world of ai as a mm-hmm. writer how do you mm-hmm. relook your job 
mm. like how does it make obviously it mm. makes a job easy correct but how do you from a career progression side mm. right mm. how do you how how do what do you see yourself as okay. in the age of ai okay so that i'll answer i think i got a better like mm. while just talking to you i got yeah. a better example to answer the first question but to make people understand how yeah. it will be useful yeah. how it's helpful okay so basically uh, you know like how is ai going to make life easy for writers mm. i think uh, i can give an example uh, so my dad's a writer he's, he is retired now but he used to be a journalist when he used to be a journalist in the 1980s 80s late 80s mm. uh, you had to write by a typewriter yeah okay hmm. so you know what writing by typewriter means there is no backspace key correct okay so like yeah. uh, and you know what writing by typewriter is yeah. there is you need to know every spelling yeah. in this uh, in the world yeah uh, you know <laughs> you know what it's like to write in a typewriter you can't like you won't get a red line saying this grammar is off yeah. uh, you can't like just select something and google it immediately mm. you need to like literally go to a library correct. and read up uh, or go through old files read up and come back and write okay uh, you cannot um uh you uh, yeah you cannot grammar check you can't like google you can't do as basic as let me write this oh this paragraph looks good on top if i use this as an intro can i cut it from here paste <laughs> it there like no you have to rewrite yeah. all right so now this is where it things were right like and yeah. now this is going to affect like i feel mm. like uh, the uh, how inventive a writer can be mm. because you're depending on like your brain space is mostly on like okay am i structuring this right okay let me not innovate too much let me not add a punchline here who's going to delete it who's going to replace it <clears throat> so you're more functional like in your writing right um uh, if you are a like not a literary writer where obviously if your job is a literary writer then you're sitting and like trying to beautify things mm. but uh, general like if you are in the content business mm. like which a newspaper journalist is then you are going for efficiency you're going for cleanliness you're going for structure uh, just very clean uh, you cannot suddenly quote something in your article because you haven't you don't know about it mm. and for you to go read about it it's going to take a day you have to go to the library find that book read that and then come back and include it in your piece yeah. so this is how difficult it was mm. okay then slowly the computers came all right like as simple as a backspace key can help you like erase quickly and rewrite yeah. fast okay so then now that like you know you can cut from here copy here copy from there paste it there so that then made it more efficient for you to try certain things yeah. out in writing yeah. all right like hey what if i have a little fun over here mm. all right and then the internet came so now you have all this and you have google hmm. so suddenly you're armed with information yeah so now when you look at it hasn't your writing process gotten more efficient hmm. so you can write a lot more now hmm. because all these other inefficiencies are getting covered hmm. uh, so you can churn a lot more content out right, right. so now i feel we are in that same place hmm. so now what are the other inefficiencies like yeah i mean if you are a literary writer where you are judged for your grammar your writing mm. style or your um flow then maybe you don't like ai is not like for you but if you are a functional writer where uh, you know you're not judged for your grammar you yeah. have to get writing through like to just put an idea across to make it like understandable for someone then like wow like you now have ai you have google you have cut copy paste you have a backspace like you seen the journey right the and, arsenal increases yeah and and you and that's made you more efficient right so i feel like ai is now the latest plug in and that's going to make you more efficient as a yeah. like a writer so you can try out weirder styles yeah you can be like okay like this is interesting what if i write this from like um, you know like uh, if like say murakami wrote this piece mm. all right show me show me how that would look yeah. all right then you'll be like okay this paragraph here is very nicely written now you quickly write this and say okay no just re rewrite this whole thing like how like an rk narayan would have written it Hmm. right how a dickens would have written it shakespeare is this one thing for me just for fun i want to add it yeah. in my writing so quickly now it's just like it's amazing right yeah so um so yeah that's where it is but yeah it's accessible to everyone now yeah so i feel the future is like going to be more like say for someone like in at at like say maybe at my stage um if now if everyone can do this then i feel you're going to get paid for judgment call mm. all right now it's like okay you have like 
like maybe like in the future ai can write amazing stuff it can write supremely funny stuff mm. but you still need someone mm. to be like okay which what do i take from here right what is going to use like what is a human truth over here that i can sort of where's my judgment going okay ai can write this but now to execute this into a film is this even possible hmm. like now if i have to like sort of get a director is this if is this script this director's strength hmm. to sort of make this no it can't so hmm. let us not go in this direction right yeah. so maybe like tomorrow there is obviously there is like now like you know you you don't even have to go like uh, you know and make the film even that gets created that by ai correct um, but yeah it's i think judgment call is uh, where i think the alpha is in terms of like uh, uh, you know sort of making money over here okay great uh, we'll do a small exercise sure. devaya and this is for everyone's education where when you get a new brief from a client who at times most of the times uh, they don't know what they want but mm. they, because they have a problem statement in it mm. right so imagine i am that client right i'll give you that problem statement what i what we intend to do out of this exercise is to understand how you navigate mm. how you get that clear message out mm. uh for everyone to learn you know mm. so so imagine i i own a uh, a pretty large company uh which uh, which is into uh, milk mm. right so obviously there are multiple companies like amul mother dairy you know mm. uh but i am the new player in the market uh, uh i am i want to be young mm. i want to be the the brand which appeals to the gen z of today's country uh mujhe nahi pata gen z kya karta hai mm. kya kaise baatein karte hai mujhe maine suna hai ki gen z is the in thing mm. young logon ko jo mm. milk pasand hai mm. wahi milk ka brand mm. main banana chahta hu mm. mujhe naam pata nahi hai abhi mm. tak theek hai mm. thoda cool name sochna hai mm. isko just cool bana do bhaiya mm. I think uh, my first question would be like, uh, can you afford the writing fee? देखो मेरा जो factory है बहुत बड़ी. Oh okay. It's cool. a it's a family so business. So you don't mind like? I I, okay. I I am I am 35 years old. It's a family owned business. Okay. मैं सोचता हूँ कि मैं young हूँ. Hmm. तो काफी सालों से ये company काफ मतलब 20 years old है. Right. It's just that I have taken on the reins from my father hmm. and. Yes, I can afford your fees. Okay, cool. So do quote your oh, fees mm. uh, at the end of the exercise. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but okay, interesting. So, the the first step over here is uh, never like uh, like you know judge like a client by how they are speaking or what their background is because I have realized that like you know. sometimes the less mba they are they are more the they are like the most amazing people because they buy the most bravest stuff because they don't have like uh, like they're not guided by like some pattern or something like that in their head which they've learned and they want to play safe so they they are also thinking from the gut so um so so if there is a 35 year old like dudwala empire's son who's like now going to take on things i feel there's a higher probability you have chance of doing some interesting disruptive work as opposed to a very big conglomerate so um i might even be more interested in doing this and like okay like whatever fee because i know there's an opportunity over here um and the biggest thing is that there is you're talking directly to the decision maker so there is nobody above this person so if you can convince this person about how good your work can be like the is very little like uh, what do you say committee over here um so as a first thing so like i spot i try and spot that i'm like okay so this is my read about the situation i'm mm-hmm. like i'm really kicked right now because i'm like okay you can do something cool over here and no one expects and it's always fun to create something new and take on like an established big brand so uh, that is i feel uh, way more interesting what do you think uh, what what do you want to say okay we'll make it make it cool mm-hmm. but what do you think like you want to communicate to people like because you have been selling milk to uh you know people who are buying and you definitely know what about your milk that they love dekho mera milk alag kuch nahi hai mm. mera milk to milk hai jo mm. pure fresh milk okay. uh very very sanitized environment all top notch european standard facilities mm. so everything is top notch right mm. but mujhe na wo emotional cord ko mm. uh 
ट्विक करना वी हैव टू टच दैट इमोशनल कॉर्ड ऑफ आर ऑफ द यंग ऑडियंस राइट सो उनके लिए जो हमारे रिसर्च ने दिखाया कि दे ऑलवेज एसोसिएट दम सेल्स विथ विच वॉट इज कूल विच इज कूल विच इज ट्रेंडी राइट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर एन आई टेक सम ऑफ दिज ये जो अभी पिक्चर आई थी ना नेटफ्लिक्स की आर्चीज सब ऑल द स्टार किड्स वर एक्टिंग इन इट राइट सो अगर माय प्रोडक्ट नीड्स टू अपील टू दैट काइंड ऑफ ऑडियंस से द गाय हु वाज प्लेइंग आर्ट द रोल ऑफ आर्चीज और वेरोनिका राइट सो इफ दे आर प्राउड टू बी एसोसिएटेड विद माय प्रोडक्ट हाउ शुड माय प्रोडक्ट बी इंटरेस्टिंग and uh, are you priced lower than like uh, the big mnc's that you are up against uh not decided yet mm-hmm. depending on on you know we can be similar priced or slightly mm-hmm. more premium mm-hmm. uh depending on mm-hmm. on and my market research is still happening okay. and i still feel that today's audience mm-hmm. have they mm-hmm. are willing to pay mm-hmm. if that product stands mm. apart mm. or make their perception mm. different and mm. hatke from rest of the audience mm. so i may i may price slightly more premium uh, so that's interesting uh, so you want to make it cool and uh, the good thing is anecdotally like whatever i have researched just before this meeting and you always have to research before the meeting whoever you're talking to to see what like quick like i'm not saying basic research like quick like quick basic research at least 20 minutes spend what is competition doing what have they done etc etc to understand what it is and okay i have not done this research right now but anecdotally i'm like okay so most milk companies are going after wholesome family yeah. wholesome emotion yeah. um so um i think the way to disrupt this is look at uh, like just be re- you, and you want to be re- relevant to the gen z uh, yeah. uh, audience yeah. and um, um they love being fit they are very yeah. conscious of how they look yeah. um so i think uh, i think what could be interesting over here that you know you should try and look at with your research is that um uh, if you can package this in a way uh, that is so uh, okay sorry so i think the like the easiest disruption metric over here is i haven't uh, seen a hilarious milk ad hmm. in a while correct or i haven't seen something that is talking to young people it's always talking to families it's yeah. very wholesome very like uh, amul and very yeah. inclusive so i think uh, doing something very fun and uh, you know treating this category like how you treat a beer category maybe hmm. uh, could be like an interesting juxtaposition as to making it relevant for uh, for young people hmm. so uh, so yeah i think maybe that's one direction we could go and uh, are you open to signing any brand ambassadors yeah till the uh, uh, and i would i would restrict myself to someone very young to agar mm. young koi hai uh, 2022 years old mm. uh, jo associate kar sakta hamare brand ke sath mm. i'm open to do that oh okay that's that's interesting so now that opens up a lot like you know he's not signed a brand ambassador but he's opening to, open to signing anyone and um so it becomes easier to sort of think now because you can think of concepts and then think who fits like a cricketer maybe or like a uh, or an actor or maybe like you know someone completely different um gives you a lot more options uh so interesting cool so i think uh, like just like i usually say like want to discuss this with my team which i do then we cannot take this brief then all the writers we all sit together and we be like okay is this is this something potential for us to do something interesting and cool um on the uh, uh, at a cursory level it looks like it right because milk is not been disrupted as a category so one w- there's good work waiting to happen or i won't say the other work is bad there's a uh, very fun work waiting to happen in that category no one's treated it in a very flippant in a very like uh, um uh, no one's defined it to a particular audience category so i think that is interesting Thanks Devaya that's a great analysis I think abhi hum kya karne wale for our audience uh, Devaya will go back discuss with his team and he'll come back to us mm-hmm. with a small copy uh, for the problem statement that we discussed and that will be accessible to everyone watching this podcast uh, okay Devaya ek last question hai uh, so as a as a custom what we do is we take this eureka shot in our hand we do a cheers and the question basically is for all our aspiring writers fresh out of college who wants to kind of make a career any last words piece of advice for them uh uh it's, it's very very cliched but have patience and uh, work on your craft 
and uh, like have targets that and be generous with the targets like to ensure that okay at the end of first year i need to do this but put those targets after you've done research that okay the, don't put unachievable targets like at mm. the end of first year i need to win can and arrow test not going to happen mm. right like so small steps but uh, content creation or content writing as a career is um, is a full time job yeah so and uh, uh, you need to like put in the hours thank you 99% of the time it'll be boring yeah like but you live for that 1% <laughs> yeah be at it be focused discipline and write thank you the bhaiya cheers today cheers